Um, so the first mistake we often see in security is leaving security settings at the default. Um, and yeah, in some cases that means no security. So that's a pretty big deal. Now security can be set at both the gateway and project levels. By default, the gateway configuration, gateway status, and ability to launch the Ignition Designer are all restricted to the internal admin role. So some security is in place already. However, it's good practice to review these settings in your environment. It's also important to note that you should not give everyone the admin login or place all users in the default admin role. This is a common mistake. No matter if you are using internal Ignition security or an external provider, you will want to create roles for security. Now, projects are more open by default. All the menus, button clicks, and set points are open as long as any user is logged in. Vision clients require a login by default, but can be configured with an auto login. Perspective sessions are open by default. Before deploying your perspective projects, consider requiring a login for the project. If you do allow open access or a guest user or auto login to launch a project, be sure to set restrictions on components inside the project. Now, there's a lot we could talk about in Ignition Security, so we'll cover a few topics here. Let's talk about gateway security first. The primary purpose of gateway security is to protect access to the two most important critical areas of Ignition, your designer and your gateway. The majority of gateway security settings can be found on the Gateway General Security Settings page. Look for the link in the config section under security. By default, only an admin user can access the configuration page, status page, or the designer. So you have some security in place already. You can make additional changes here. For example, you could restrict access to the gateway homepage or set user inactivity timeouts. Even if you make no changes here, it's a good idea to review this page and understand who has access to your gateway configuration and designer. Again, Remember you want to restrict which users are in the admin role. This should be only users that can make gateway changes or designer changes. Review the security section of the user manual for more information. Now let's switch over to project level security. For some projects such as status displays, an auto login in Vision or allowing no login for perspective is appropriate. Consider requiring a login for any projects with sensitive information or set point control. Now, for vision projects, you can set an identity provider or user source and required roles on the project general tab. You can set designer permission on the project permissions tab. Auto login can be configured on the vision login tab and additional permissions can be set on the vision permissions tab. When setting login security for a prospective project, use the prospective permissions tab and select security level zones for login. Now, once a user is logged into a project, they have access to all windows, page views, and button clicks by default. It's very likely that you don't want everyone changing set points, and some of your information may be management only. It's best practice to define roles and restrict access to buttons or other components such as set point entries based on that role. It's common to assign roles by function, such as operator, supervisor, or team lead. Roles may also be assigned by lines or departments. A component can be visible but disabled, or it can be completely hidden if the logged in user is not a member of the role. Vision windows and components can be protected by right clicking on any object and choosing security. Perspective resources can be set to disabled or invisible by binding to expressions for role memberships. Once we have roles on our visualization components, we should think about tag security as well. This will ensure that even if a component somewhere in a project allows access to a tag, the user still must meet security requirements to view or write to that tag. You'll first want to set up security levels, then assign the levels to the read and write permissions on your tags. Don't worry if you already created all your tags. You can select multiple tags for editing in bulk, or you can export tags, bulk modify the security settings, and then re-import your tags. The next mistake is leaving your data unencrypted. 
we highly recommend enabling SSL on your gateway. Secure Socket Layer, or SSL, is a widely used security protocol for data as it goes across a network or the internet. Using this protocol will secure network traffic and help protect your data. You can turn on SSL in the config section of the Gateway webpage. Look for Web Server Settings under Network. There is even a guided setup integrated into the Gateway. Turning on SSL will encrypt all data sent over HTTP. This will include all browsers connecting with the Gateway's web interface and all Vision Client and Perspective Session communication. We provide instructions in our user manual for setting up SSL and obtaining a certificate. Using built-in or internal database hybrid security is well suited for single gateway solutions. Um, now, when you get into enterprise architectures with multiple gateways, those user sources are not going to be synced. Having an external source, such as Active Directory for authentication is ideal. Adding or removing a user and assigning roles is then centralized and will only have to be done in one place. Consider establishing Active Directory, single sign-on security. Add an extra layer of protection by using two-factor authentication. Finally, we highly recommend reviewing the Security Hardening Guide, which you will find in the Resources section of our website. One more note on security. Don't make the mistake of not having backups. We have automated features for backups. For a single gateway solution, use the auto backup feature. You can, be, you can schedule your backups to be stored in a network location. If you are using an enterprise solution, then be sure to implement the collect backup task. It's beyond the scope of this presentation to go over network and database backups. Be sure to consult with your IT department to make sure server backups and database backups are in place. Now back to Kent for a recap. Thank you, Mara. Uh, before we wrap up and move on to QA, let's recap some of these security mistakes and solutions. Uh, the first mistake is muting your mic. No, just kidding. But the first mistake is having no security measures. And obviously, the solution is to implement some of these other solutions we've gone over. The next mistake is having uniform security clearance, which is solved by assigning user-based roles so that security is managed on a person-by-person -person basis. Next is having security only on visualization. Uh, that's not enough. You need to be securing your tags themselves to ensure your system is safe. Uh, speaking of which, having unencrypted HTTP isn't going to cut it either, uh, so you need to use SSL to make sure all of your information is always encrypted. If you don't have a centralized user source, you know, uh, you need to use Active Directory for help with authentication, and you can increase the level of security by implementing two-factor authentication. And finally, if you don't have uh, gateway backups, use automated backup solutions either on a single gateway or at an enterprise scale. 